everyone, it's Catherine here from Inky Fingered Cat and I've got something to share with you which is a flip through of my journal that I made that was butterfly themed. Now I am going to create another cover for it because this is quite marked, uh, it's also only made from paper so it does need a separate cover for it but I'm not going to do that just yet. Uh, I actually made this as a sample for the class that I've just done with my friends, I'm saying class, it's just a crafting along session that we do on uh, Zoom. Um, but I provided them with some supplies, took them through. Um, the actual one that I made during the class is here and it's yet to be used. Um, but, so I'll share that at another point. But this was a sample and I wanted to show them how you could use journals like this. Uh, so it's not exactly a junk journal, although some of it is old book pages, etc. Because some of the papers are brand new. So for example, there's the Butterfly Bijou uh, paper, which is throughout. The whole journal but there's also book, book pages from coloring books there's book print there's music print there's random so this is like a cream laid paper there's graph paper you know there's all sorts in there and you'll see as you go through but i wanted to show them how you can use these things to create memory keeping so i decided that i would document my brave the shave journey so um, in April 2019, I braved the shave um, in honour of my friend Sue, who was just about to start going through treatment and um, in memory of my friend Linda, who unfortunately did lose her battle to cancer, uh, breast cancer in particular. So I decided I was going to do something special to raise some funds for Macmillan. Uh, but also to sort of support, show my support to Sue, who was about to go through a really tough journey. What's really amazing news is Sue has survived and actually thrived after her, her treatment. She had a really hard time of it, but good news is currently cancer free. So that's the excellent news. If anyone's interested in my Brave the Shave journey, it is my most watched video on YouTube. It's a sped up version of me having my hair shaved off by my mainly my husband uh, Sue does play a little part as does one of our other friends daughters Caitlin um, but you get to see that on Instagram on uh, YouTube so without further ado this is my Brave the Shave journal now first of all you can see it's quite chunky I have got a couple of pages that I've left not quite finished so one of them is Sue's story that I want to document but I haven't got the photos yet to do that and the other one is the actual fundraising element because I want to go and look up all the numbers and stuff like that I'm not quite sure how I want to do that yet but I've left space for both of those and there's a mixture of some pages that are really just decorative as well as the ones that are documenting so here we go apologies if there's some um reflection uh, I'll do my best to try and keep that to a minimum. So, uh, some a little tag just saying it's a journal to document my Brave the Shave journey, my hair regrowth and to celebrate my fundraising and to honour Sue and Linda. So throughout the journal I've done like little collage pieces and tags and things like that to keep it in but there's also plenty of photographs. So some photographs are quite large like this one which obviously has to be the big focal one which is me with the shaved head just after I had done it. Sort of like I think I had potentially just had a shower actually after we shaved it but it, it's within sort of like 20 minutes of me having finished the shaving uh, in front of my little braid the shave poster that's the other thing I want to print off a couple of the bits of uh, merchandise or, or um, posters and pictures and stuff that uh, Macmillan gave me so these are actually screenshots from the video of the hair disappearing and on this one I used watercolour paper on this page and I just added some inks um, in the background and then some of the paper uh, this was me just before the shave happened, like a good, well, probably about two hours before the, it happened, waiting for our friends to turn up because we did it as a party. Uh, and I used a doily, some book print, some stickers for the title. Um, yeah. And again, the Butterfly Bijou is the main pattern paper that, that goes throughout this whole journal. 
here we've got another collage pocket and this has got a picture of me and my lovely friend sue just after i'd had my shave um so that was sue pre-treatment she was just about to start her treatment in fact i think she'd had one session yeah i think she'd had one session at that point of treatment um i included swallowtail swallowtail um stamped images because i love them so i've included those a couple of times in this particular journal so that's just a decorative page this is the following morning my husband's yet to at this point sort of do a bit of a, a tidy up job because there was a few patches where he'd just not quite got it quite as close as he needed to so it looks like i've got weird tufts going on there that's me posing with my friend's daughter's glasses that she'd left uh, so again little tags and pockets and you'll start to see that there's washi tape i think this might be the first time i've used the washi tape in the journal yeah i think so uh, but I used a couple of different kinds of butterfly washi tape. This is one of the colouring book pages, which when I move that tag, you'll see it's a colouring book. A uh, gorgeous colouring book that I was given at some point and I've not really used, so I thought this was a good way of using it. So I created a tag and this washi tape, your, uh, your only limit is you, is one that I've had for a while and I thought it was perfect to to including this because to be honest it was all about the strength of the two friends um and also my own sort of bravery to do something small uh, i do think that brave to shave is a really odd thing to call it because i don't count it as being brave to have your head shaved what i do count as being brave is facing the fight against cancer um especially in the very courageous way in which my friend sue and linda both did so I created some tags. This one was a bit of a everything going to town on it, really, with a bit of stamping in the background, some stenciling. But on that, I've just got a, quite a bit of documenting. And the same for these little tags into a pocket that I'd created, like a, a dual pocket. And again, there's journaling on the reverse of these. And I was just really going to town with die cuts from the butterfly Um Ooh, I don't know what it's called actually, but it goes with the Butterfly Brilliance stamp, uh, which went with this kit, uh, these papers. Um, so I was using the die cuts, the stamps, bits of the paper, etc. to throughout the whole journal. Also started to include things like tissue paper that was in a nice colour. I love that paper, I just think it's so pretty. Um so this was actually my first outing post shave so i've done quite a bit of journaling about that is it probably is the strongest memory i've got in terms of feeling really self-conscious when i was out and about sort of this was the i think it might have been the day after or two days after i'd shaved my head so yeah i was really conscious of the fact that what i didn't want was for people to think i was ill because i wasn't and i didn't want people to think that so this is me in work. I think it was actually a couple of days after I've gone back in work rather than the first day back. Because um, I know my first day back I actually wore my Brave the Shave t-shirt. But yeah, this was, um, at this point I was sort of trying to take um, selfies every day just to start to see the hair growth. And I think you can already see it by that point. It was really starting to grow. So by this point, uh, things were sort of like, so if I put a hoodie on, the, the fabric would stick to my hair. It was a bit like Velcro. But the thing about being in work was I've never had my head touched so much. It was just like a continuous thing. People would come up and talk to me about my hair all day. It was really funny. Um, so yeah, this was me daily documenting. So it wasn't exactly daily, but it was sort of like um, taking lots of pictures on Instagram and uh, different selfie poses and stuff just to show the hair regrowth. Uh, and what I was feeling at the time. One thing that was really important to note was that it was quite sunny and um, that meant I had to keep remembering sun cream and hats and things that I'd not really thought quite the same about when I'd had hair. This was my first sort of proper night out. I went out with my daughter, we went to the theatre um, and so that was my first sort of chance of getting really dressed up. So by June, we were at eight weeks post-shave and at this point I could start to try and style it. So rather than it being fluffy, I was actually starting to use product on the hair. So that was quite interesting. And also I think by that point, all the donations were in and counted. 
so I love making journals like this where you've got sort of shorter pages so it's a really nice so even though obviously it doesn't go necessarily with the other page because I've used complementary colours throughout the journal every page kind of starts to go together and starts to look really fun with all the different size pages so I've left that as sort of a decorative page for the moment and not really put anything else in uh, so this was me sort of documenting how the hair sort of was starting to get longer so by this point it was actually flat after I'd got out the shell for the first time I could actually flatten it um, or you know really you know trying to dress it up um, I was also very conscious of the fact that I've got a grey streak which is a, a family trait so this page I've left I've left blank for the moment I've put a little bit of ink in the background I've added my photograph but this is where I want to document about the actual fundraising and how much I managed to raise and I just need to get all the totals and things uh, but this particular picture was uh, when I'd been and banked £221.80 in cash and cheque donations which was stunning but obviously nothing compared to what I actually raised in total Again, another just a simple little collage using bits and pieces. So these are the three haircuts that were my first haircuts post um, shave. So the first one just was a little bit of a, a tidy up and a slight flattening of the sides. This one I'd started, um, Robin had managed to again start to put some style into it. And by this point I was onto some very small amounts of um highlights in order to get rid of um i kept looking like some kind of weird boring middle-aged politician so it was nice to be able to get my hair done now uh, this is when sue had by this point started to have some regrowth on her hair so uh we don't have very many pictures of the two of us together at all um especially not during her journey because she really was quite poorly uh, going through treatment um but yeah this was one of the the first ones that we managed to get when she'd started to feel better and uh, start to look really healthy and obviously hair had started to regrow um so i'd quite like to document a little bit more about sue's journey but i've not got all the facts and figures yet so i'm, I'm going to wait until i've got those and i want a couple of her pictures to include Starlight Walk is really important for me to include. So Starlight Walk is a walk that we do for charity for St Rocco's, which is our local hospice. Uh, and I've done it for a number of years now. And part of the reasons that I do that is actually for Linda. Linda uh, decided uh, just before she got her second diet, yeah, before I think she was diagnosed um, and it turned out to be terminal, but um, she decided she wanted to do the Starlight Walk. So I said, yeah, 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 we'll do that. Not realising it was 13 miles. Never mind, we did it the first year. Uh, by the second year, she had her cancer had returned and she was starting to feel very unwell. Um, but she still did the half the starlight walk because you can do half or, or you do one lap or two laps. Um, so we still did one lap together. Um, so yeah, I have very special memories of doing starlight walks with Linda. By the following year, unfortunately, she was no longer with us and um, I managed to raise an awful lot of money for Starlight Walk. I've not done a big fundraiser on it since, but I have joined in every year that's been possible. Unfortunately, 2020 had to be cancelled, um, so I just donated my own money to St Rocco's rather than doing it as a fundraising event. Um, but I'm very pleased that in 2019 uh, and 2018, I managed to walk with Linda's daughter, and my own daughter and uh, some of the other girls as well um so yeah this year was very important to me that i did it um because i could think about even though linda um unfortunately lost her battle because sue was um doing a really good job of fighting and winning her battle at this point it was very much a special night for us um this is this has got bear with me a little bit of journaling but it's also just got some random other selfies i've not really got a huge amount to say by this point because things have basically started to go back to normal uh so i've just got a couple of decorative pages and these are where i'm hoping maybe i'll be able to add in some additional information for sue's story if not here it'll be at the back and then i've got a page about our linda um the lovely lovely linda uh, and I've actually done quite a lot of journaling on that but I 
you know it's quite emotional um and i still struggle struggle when i think about linda and um yeah miss her so that's it we're at the back now uh the, as i say i have got another couple of pages um so it might be sorry i've got other duplicate photographs so it might be that actually sue's story goes in here um and then i might want to add something else at the back but i'm not quite sure yet what else to include because i've now included all the photos i wanted to include but i hope you enjoyed that little flip through um as i say i think that there'll be a more sturdy cover to be placed on this at some point um and obviously there's a little bit just to finish off um but i'm i'm really pleased with it um hope you enjoyed that do you make junk journal type things or and what do you use them for so i have said to my friends that obviously you can do them just as collage books or just as writing journals with some decoration in them or to document things or to um actually do art journaling type things uh, it's completely up to you how you use journals but i just wondered if, if other people use them like this to kind of document a story um, if you did enjoy that, please do give me a thumbs up and um, subscribe to see more. I've got lots of other bits and pieces. I have been doing a lot of journaling recently and I think I need to have a little bit of a, uh, a break and start thinking about other projects that I could do and share with you on YouTube. Um, so I'll have a think about that over the next weekend. And until next time, goodbye. <laughs>